I am so excited because from this particular season, this current season of Love is Blind UK season one from the UK, we have the one, the only <laughs> Craig Davy <laughs> in the building. If you're gonna name drop, let's get it clear. Jesse, who? VBS. I just turn the water on. Big old flex. Shit you never saw before. These niggas chasing me like waterfall. What's up, y'all? It's your sister. Jesse Wu, make sure that you like, you share, and you subscribe. Leave me a comment, all right? Subscribe, subscribe, so you could join the Black Women's Tribe during Black Women's. We finna, we about to interview Oli from Love Is Blind UK Black Women's Month, okay? <laughs> also, I just want to remind you guys before we get into this interview that during Black Women's, we finna go to Tulum Black Women's Month. <laughs> go to www.wukation.net, sign up to come with me to Tulum in October. It's going to be so so much fun. I don't want you guys to miss out on it so please 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 sign up while you still can now let's get into this interview I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> no better known as Oli Sutherland Oli how are you feeling how are you doing like how are you doing just given that like the world knows who you are now like how do you feel it's crazy like to go from just me being me like what all of two three weeks ago and then now it's like I was in the gym last night and some girl came up and was like Oh my god, can I get a picture? It's like it's so weird because to me nothing's changed. Like I'm still the same person I was two, three weeks ago. But now I've like you said, everyone knows my story, everyone knows my, yeah. my relationship inside and out. And people are invested. That's it's, it's been it's been positive. Like people are genuinely invested in who I am and, and what me and Demi are doing and things like that. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, really cool. So let's just start off with this. I mean, I definitely want to know a little bit more about you, but I want to start with this. Usually when people go on Love is Blind, especially like the last, like I want to say the last season, we had somebody who came on and said she looked like Megan Fox. Oh, boy. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and it was not, it was given probably one of Megan's Foxes, but not Megan. It wasn't given Megan Fox. But mm -hmm. when you said sometimes people mistake you for Craig David, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, let me let me clear that up for a start, yeah. For one, for one, okay. I don't think I look like him, but I've always, always been told I do. So for me, when I was saying that, and again, you know how these shows go. They they're there on the camera, like going, "So, do you have any uh, celebrity lookalikes?" And everyone mm -hmm. really say it. So I'm like, "Oh, here we go. Yeah, okay, I'll say it." Because I've been told it during the audition process. I've been told it, like I say, throughout my life. So it was something that's gonna come up. The boys were saying it. So like, I specifically said, "I don't think I look like him," but I get told. And then the funny thing was. When the cast was announced before the show even went out, there was people in, like doing video reviews going like, "Oh, we got this guy." And this guy looks like Craig David. I was like, "Oh, here we go." So again, I don't think before, it was before. Before I never said it in the pods. Either. I never said it, said it in the pods. Like uh, whatever her name was, the Megan Fox girl. She said it in the pods as if to try and like yes. influence what people thought. I never once mentioned it in the pods. I mentioned oh. it. Yeah. So that's but, true you never said it. Well, we never saw you say it in the pods. Nah, I never once said it. But I was very, very um particular about not giving anything away about my looks in the pods at all okay okay before we go in the pods right i'm glad you mentioned that but let's just talk about you before you got on the show so you're in software sales you are 32. i was 30. i'm now 30. i'm now 34 i just turned 34 like three days ago so yeah how long ago did you guys well happy birthday thank you, thank you. You're so a leo. huh you're a leo yeah i'm a leo i'm a leo strong okay. leo I like Leo guys. Leo guys are very cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it was, I was 32 going into the show. I turned 33 during the show. It's true. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now it's 34. So it's, it feels like it's been two years, but it's not. It's like a year and a half. Okay, okay, okay. So, young dude, you're Leo. You're good looking. Why are you single? What's going on with the dating scene in London? Like uh, London's like London's crazy in a good way and a bad way. But I think you have got so much to do. There's so many places to go out, so many places to meet people. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not short on supply of an opportunity to meet people and, and date. But that can make it harder in a weird way because, for one of a better phrase, like you kind of get you get you you kid yourself into thinking there's a million and one options, which in a way there is. But then it's like it makes it harder to want to settle down because. Mm -hmm. you're just, and if, I'll be real, like a lot of young guys kind of in a weird way you become commitment averse when there's so much option out there and it makes you it makes you pickier when you really shouldn't be like i've had relationships don't get me wrong but it's like 
And then also the, the dating scene here can be quite superficial and it can be quite fast moving. Like someone might be in love with you one minute and then they're gone the next. So yeah, it's like in a weird way, being from a small town can be more beneficial, but I love London. I wouldn't change it. So. Have you ever been in love before? before? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A few times, okay. a few times. Okay. Okay. And so I still don't get why someone like you, you're successful, you're young, you're good looking. Like, do you feel that you're usually picky? Is that why you said, okay, this experiment is better for me? All right, first of all, I'm gonna have to come on the show again because I like these compliments. These are these are doing very good for my, <laughs> my self right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna be back. Um, <laughs> now I think I don't know. I think it's a bit of both. It's like for me, there's a, I heard a phrase the other day. So it's like certain people don't find it hard to find people to date. They find it hard to find people they want to date. And it's like for me, it takes a lot for me to go from oh yeah, I'm just hanging out with her. She's cool to me being like wow, no, this is my person. This is the person I want to settle down with and I can see a future with. And I think there's a big difference between that. Like, like, like a lot of people, I could, find, I could probably find someone to go on a date with tomorrow, but would I be really, really happy? And would I be really, like, fulfilled in that way? Maybe, maybe not. And it's like, I don't want to just waste my time with just anyone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's move on to getting on the show, right? Like, what made you say, I need this particular experience? Were you contacted or did you submit yourself? Were there friends and family in your life saying, you know what, you should go on this show? Like, how did it come about? So I was actually contacted for a previous show under the same production company. I won't name them just in case I get in any trouble, but yeah, yeah. they contacted me for that show. And I was like, and I kind of went through the audition process a little bit. And I said, actually, now I'm not really interested. And then I was off all socials, funny enough. So the only reason they got in touch with me is because they still have my number. And they hit me up saying, oh, we're now doing Love is Blind. Are you interested? And I was like, maybe like again i kind of just entertain it for the sake of it like yeah I, you know it sounds interesting but do i really want to go and put myself out there i don't know and then kind of went through it and then got to the next stage then got to the next stage and before you know i was like you know what why not it's like mm -hmm. i've said i've said no to so many things in life not just like tv opportunities but just things in general and i thought life begins when you start saying yes and i thought let's go for it let's see what happens i like that i like that life begins when you start saying yes i like that okay only <laughs> you got them little bars now <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you say, let me go ahead and do this. Um, were you going into this really, really hopeful that, okay, you would make a connection and you would ride that connection off into marital sunset? Like, do you know what? And I spoke about this on the show briefly. I went into it very, very like skeptical and dubious. And I think maybe that probably did impact the way I acted. I went in there thinking like, I doubt I'm going to fall in love with the pods. I doubt I'm even going to like have a crush on someone in the pods. I doubt even, I'm even going to feel anything in the pods. But let's just go. It'll be fun regardless. Whatever happens, happens. And then Demi kind of took me by surprise. And that's that's the real truth of this. Like, I wasn't expecting to feel anything. And then, so I, I, I kind of, and that's why in the early stages, you see me, I'm just messing around with the boys. I'm doing cartwheels. I'm throwing fruit. Yeah. I'm, that's just who I am. I'm a class clown. And I was, that's, I, I let into that. I wasn't going to be anyone but myself. And then before you know it, you're kind of like going to bed at night thinking like, I want to speak to Demi tomorrow. I want to speak to Demi tomorrow. And it, it really does creep up on you, those feelings. And and that's just me being real. It's like, yeah, I went in there. And I think a lot of the boys noticed that. It's like, you came in here like a joker. And then you come out here like, you're. I can tell you're really fit in something. And oh, that was nice to have that journey, you know, so. Well, let's talk about Demi. Let's talk about, you're in the pods, right? Day in, day out. Y'all are in there for days and, and making these connections we saw you make a connection with Demi and Catherine. But before we mm -hmm. go to them, did you make any other connections that we didn't get to see? Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so um, I had, oh boy. So yeah, I had a, another connection with someone called Charlotte who you may or may not have seen and she actually come back. Not the Charlotte. Oh, we're going to get to Charlotte later on, baby. We gonna Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so yeah, she was my other connection. And funny enough, like, I genuinely, I was really, really surprised when I found out that they weren't showing our story because our story was, I would say, arguably as strong. It probably wasn't as strong as the cat, the cat thing, but uh -huh. it was very, very strong. And like, uh, again, I don't want to get, I don't want to get in any trouble for for saying talking about too much about what happened off camera. But I'm not saying the producers did this deliberately, but it, they got a finite amount of time. They can only show a certain amount of story. Right, right, right. A yeah. lot of things get left off of it in the cutting room board. Yeah. Yeah. They got a hard job and I I don't envy them, but they do a really good job. But yeah, so me and Charlotte had a strong connection. She was a little bit more withdrawn than she would be in real life. So I wasn't really feeling the same kind of buzz as, as I would be like, you know, outside. But yeah, me and Kat, me and Demi, me and Charlotte. And uh, it was tough because you feel you start feeling bad, like you're cheating on them, even though this is the name of the game, like you're supposed to be. Right. 
So it's it's a tough one. So like, can you yeah. speak a little bit more? Like, do y'all really be feeling like like when you're in the pods, right? Because the whole goal is to make connections, even if it's multiple, and then start winding down. I'm pretty sure there's a process where they're like, okay, like y'all have to start winding down your top three. Okay. Your top two. Okay. Now you like, you, you know, they're probably guiding you all, but inside internally, how does that make you feel? Like, do you feel bad? Do you feel like, damn, like I'm cheating or cause you see people take this stuff really, really serious when they're in the pods. Like, oh, so he was in there with her and she baked him a cake and you know, and he bought her flour. Like <laughs> what is the dynamics of that for you? Yeah, it gets tricky. It gets very, very tricky because, like you said, on the first day, you date everyone. So there's 15 guys, 15 girls, and you date all 15 of each other on the first day. By day two, I think it's whittled down to maybe like 12 or eight. I can't remember. Basically, day by day, you're seeing less and less people. So by the by the final day, you're seeing two people. But like by in the, in the middle stage, you're sort of seeing like five people. And, and you kind of have a say in who you see. I can't really disclose too much about the, right. the, 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 that makes it happen. But basically depending on who you want to see, if they also want to see you, that's going to happen. If I if I really want to see Demi, but Demi doesn't want to see me, that's not going to happen. On okay. the other hand, if I really want to see Demi and she kind of wants to see me, then we'll probably, we'll probably see each other. And then, yeah, it gets to the point where, let's say on day six, I saw a certain person on day five and I didn't see her on day six. She's there in the lounge going, oh, I didn't see Ollie today. That means he didn't want to see me. And it's like, it can get personal. Yeah, and then, and then it gets back to you in other dates. Like, oh, by the way, such as I've said that she wanted to see you. And she did. Yeah, it gets tricky. And then you're back in the boys' lounge now hearing people going, oh, I really want to see such and such. But she said she's feeling someone else. And you're there going, oh, that might be me. It's, it gets techie because yeah. you don't want to be stepping on anyone's toes. But at the same time, and Demi kind of alluded to this herself, like, you're there for yourself. Like, you're not trying to make enemies. Right. But essentially, you're also not there for friends. You're there for a partner. So you have to do what you have to do. So, yeah. yeah. It's called love is blind, not friendship is blind. Exactly, um, exactly. <laughs> so... We see you connect with Catherine and Demi, right? And I must admit, as I was watching it, I'm thinking, oh, him and Catherine, like they're gonna, they're gonna ride off into the sunset. But then we see Demi come in and we see immediately, just telling as a viewer, I love Demi immediately. The moment she came on my screen, I was like, I ride for her. Like I ride for her at dawn. I love her. I just loved her vulnerability and i loved you guys' conversations i loved how she put you first like she baked you a cake for your birthday you know like she went out of herself to let you know as at least as a viewer to let you know that she was all in for you um and then we have catherine who you know we kind of see her dynamics with demi in the in the girl suite which obviously you don't know because you're in the boy suite so you have no idea what's going on in there um but we kind of see her say something like well i'm gonna be the bigger person and i'm gonna start <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be the bigger person i love y'all accent the thing is like with the london people y'all uk people y'all have great accents y'all y'all still ghetto but <laughs> the ghetto be sounding better because of the accent. But she was like, hey, I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to step aside. Um, even though I don't see that's them. Not bad, you know. That's not bad, by the way. I've got to give you that. That's, that's, really? Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. I've heard some terrible uh, English accents from Americans, and that, that's not one of them. That's pretty good. Not, not as given London. <laughs> 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 but, you know, we see her say that. Um, and later on, we kind of see you owe to... Uh, kind of shine a light on the fact that, well, you were going to get off of the Catherine train anyway, mm -hmm. because we kind of do see where things with you and Demi are going. What made you decide that Demi was the one and Catherine wasn't? Like, what was going through your head at the time? So, again, with Kat, it was like, again, I spoke about this on the show itself. It's like she was giving more flirty vibes. and it was There didn't seem to be as much depth. We did speak about some deeper things that didn't really get shown because obviously she adopted she spoke about that my mom's adopted so i kind of know the ins and outs of like what kind of um issues that can bring up so i was able to relate to her on that oh, we just wow. think about some deeper things but for the most part it did just feel like and again i don't want to like brag about myself it felt like as soon as i stepped in and she heard my accent and she could tell where i was from and what i might look like if you get what i'm saying that seemed like the, the pool to her rather than like yeah that seemed like the pool to her rather than like okay. rather than like anything i I'd, I'd said it was more just like how I was saying it. 
because straight away she's like, oh, hey, how are you? Like, it was, and I remember coming out going, uh, I'm not really too sure about this one. She seems really into me, but I can't figure out why. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know what I mean, like, um, whereas Demi, we had like, we started, we were a slow burn. We started out like really, really good friends and it got flirtier and it got more romantic as time went on. And for me, that's more, that's got more longevity than someone who's like, there's just immediate like mm-hmm. heat, so to speak. So I was like, yeah, no, Demi feels like the, 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 the more real option. Um, oh and God. yeah, like it's funny you said it because obviously I had gone in there on my birthday of all days, yeah, going to break things off with Kat. And then when I sat in the lounge and, and I said, She's like, Where's your head? And I was like, Oh, my head's all over the place. And what I meant by that was my head's all over the place because I know what I've got to do right now, not because I'm still making the decision. It was because I know I've got to break things off with you right now. I'd already broken things off with Charlotte that morning again, it didn't get shown. Then I had to break things off with Kat, and then I could kind of secure things with Demi. But then obviously, she broke beat me to it and, and broke yeah. it off. And I don't care, like that whole. Who dumped who is so primary school. Oh primary. my God. We're gonna so, get, we're yeah, that's, going that's, to get into that. <laughs> we're gonna get into that. Mm. Because I definitely want to get into that. And we're gonna put a pin on that. But cool. okay, so things break off with Kat. Cool. Now focusing more on you and Demi. A part of me watching this was like, damn, this man has a lot of emotional intelligence. It's either he's very emotionally intelligent or he's full of shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> maybe a bit of both. Maybe a bit of both. Okay, who knows? But when y'all had the endometriosis conversation, I it brought me, it, it made me very emotional because it is a, it is an issue that a lot of women deal with. I don't personally deal with it, but fertility is something that so many women deal with. And Demi's in the pods and she's here to find her husband. Okay. And she breaks down telling you this. And I, I as she's telling you what, you know, what she deals with, I'm waiting to see what you're going to say. I'm like, Oh Lord, Please, please do not disappoint me. And you gave her such a soft place to land. Like, I was very impressed with that. And I want to know, is that really who you are? Are you really that understanding? Like, you you eat, you eat, also had other solutions. You're like, listen, like, having kids is not the end-all be-all. There are other ways to have children. You know, I'm adopted. Like, like you had all these different avenues to address what her concern was. Is that really who you are, Only? Like, are you really always this understanding? Have you always been that way? Where, where do you pull from to have that type of empathy? Um, thank you again for the amazing compliment. I genuinely really kind to you to, to, to hear. Um, Nah, genuinely, that is really who I am. It's like, I'm not perfect in every aspect of my life. I don't want to pretend for one minute that I am. But with regards to things like that and having empathy and having, having compassion, that is something that I've, I like to think I'm, I'm my head screwed on with that regard. And I've, I've got my mum to thank for that. My mum's an amazing person. She's very, very kind, very, very compassionate, very, very empathetic. And she's, her moral compass is always pointing in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. And I picked that from her. So with regards to the adoption, the, sorry, the, um, the fertility thing, Mm-hmm. again you you can ho- hopefully people can realize i'm not i'm not full of shit when i said what i said because if you yeah. go back to episodes demi had mentioned about kids and i said yeah i'd like to have kids but it's not the be all and end all mm-hmm. this is before i this is before i even knew about the endo endo stuff so i was just being genuine it's like because i I've, I've always said i wanted kids but as i got older and i realized that a some people can't have kids and b some people want to focus on their career i just kind of said to myself like i'm going to make sure i'm happy with i'm going to make peace with either outcome if i have kids okay. great if I don't have kids, great. If we adopt, great. It's like my life's going to be great regardless because I'm going to make it so. So if we have, I'm not going to pin all of my happiness on this particular outcome because if it doesn't go that way, then where am I left? So that was a, a genuine, honest answer. Um, the only thing that like made me feel different about Demi, like I said in, in the pod, is I felt bad that she had to go through this physical and emotional pain on a regular basis. I, I didn't know the ins and outs of this of this condition. So um, I was learning about it on the spot. I think at the time I probably didn't even know how to spell it. But yeah. what I do is it fits I don't think I'm not to spell it. It's <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of the fertility thing, it doesn't change anything it's because you know I've learned that having kids isn't for everyone for personal choice, and it's not for everyone because of biological reasons, and that's okay. And it's like yeah, it's like each other. That's the main thing, and, that, and that's genuinely what I mean. And I haven't got kids as of now. Will I have a kids? Will I have kids in the future? Maybe, but if I don't, that's you. Thirty four, no kids. No kids. No kids. No kids. Not for. Real. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't look at me like that. For real, for real. Somebody lying. No, nah. somebody lying. Wow. You, ain't got, you ain't got no kids in Haiti nowhere. So, what, nah. what's, your, what's your heritage? What is your heritage? Nah. I'm a, my heritage is Jamaica. You Jamaican and you ain't got I no know, kids? I know, I know, I know. Nah. <laughs> Listen, I make jokes about it all the time. I'm like, by the time I hit 27, I was like, I'm 27 and I'm Jamaican with no kids. I'm letting the family down. I'm letting my lineage down. What's going on? I know your daddy is like, what is going on? Uh -oh. this, is, this is not the way, the truth, or the, or the Jamaican life. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm Haitian, so Jamaicans oh, are my cousins. Yes, yes, yes. So Jamaicans are my cousins. I go to Jamaica at least once per year. Like, I love Oh, Jamaica. nice, nice. So you know, so you know. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, Listen, I know Caribbean men, period. You make it to your 30s with no children. That's a that's a miracle. I don't, know, what a... I don't know what's happened. <laughs> <laughs> that is a miracle, okay? Um, so let's talk about you guys make this bomb connection in the pods, right? Now it's time to meet. You 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 get engaged, she says yes. Now it's time to meet. Can you walk me through you're standing there? the doors are about to open you see her like what what it what is that feeling like what what is that like yeah that feeling is crazy because it's like i don't think i don't know it's weird i, I i'm the kind of person i said this on, on one of the podcasts the other day as well like when i'm on the phone to like the bank customer service i instantly assign a face to a, a voice mm -hmm. every single time i've got quite a creative mind so i already had a face in mind with regards to demi and even though she didn't look a million miles apart from what i thought it still wasn't that same face mm -hmm. and then you're and that you've, you've been doing 10 days of hearing this voice come out of this like speaker this purple wall yeah. and you've seen it come out of a person it doesn't quite match up it feels surreal it almost feels fake and the only way i've described it like this way before is like it feels like ai it feels like they've animated a person and it's wow. not real because it's that, that's not where the voice comes from usually so it does feel really weird and i think i was a bit starstruck like you're kind of there like I'm still not used to even even up to like maybe day two of being in Greece. I was still like I can't get my head around the fact that this voice is coming out of a human being that I can see. So mm -hmm. that was that was weird. But yeah, I, just, I honestly I thought when I saw her, I was like she's beautiful. She got a big smile, curvaceous body, which is what I like, and just like the the bond just increased even more so when I saw her in person compared to when I saw her in, uh, we was talking in the pod. So I was happy. You said she had the bunda. I was like not the bunda. <laughs> oh, that is that bunda bunda Haitians say that. Where does oh, that? Bro, yeah, I thought it was a Brazilian like, word originally, but yeah, it's probably, it's really? probably from worldwide. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's so probably from worldwide right now. You're also in, intertwined because muda buda, like that's something that I grew up. Oh, for saying. real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I heard you say that, I was like, is he Haitian? Like, I didn't know that. On? I didn't know they were going to air that. I was like, oh, they really aired that. I I'm glad it. they did. I'm mm. glad they did. I'm like, yeah, you better appreciate her bunda. Yes, exactly. <laughs> all the curves. She looked good. She's pretty. I wanted to see you admire her and admire, like, not only who, who she's been to you in the pods, but what she looked like. Mm. So, yeah, yeah so y'all are there. You get engaged again. Like, you, you put the ring on her finger. Like, how do you, can you explain what it's like? You do that and then you guys have to leave. Like, what is all of that like? Yeah, so it's it's more complicated than that. So again, like you you yeah, you leave each other, and then next time you see them again, you're in Greece. You don't even fly out okay. to Greece together. You and don't then, see each other. Mm -mm, I met her there. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's it's very surreal because you literally have all of ten minutes with her, mm -hmm. and then the next, next time you see her, you're in this like on this beautiful Greek island, mm -hmm. and you're like what is essentially almost like a honeymoon before the honeymoon kind of thing. It's yeah. Really I call it the, en the engagement moon. I'm like, okay. When they yeah. Call yeah. <laughs> they, call, they call it the couple's retreat, which is, okay. yeah. But yeah. Okay. Nah. So now you're at the couple's retreat, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't, Demi talked about like her body in the pond, mm -hmm. right? And and how she was kind of nervous about meeting you because, you know, she like, listen, I like to eat. You know, I kind of see the other woman that he was building a connection with. You know, we don't look the same. Um, and we kind of see her kind of touch on that a little bit in Greece, too. You know, how did you address that with her? Were you reassuring? You know, um, it, are curvaceous women usually what you go for? 
a thousand percent. And this this has honestly been the most frustrating thing that I've had to go through. Mm -hmm. Seeing the tweets, seeing the comments, seeing yeah. the videos is and even but what annoyed me the most is even before I laid eyes on Cat, there, I was seeing hundreds of tweets and comments saying, "Ah, oh, when Oli sees Cat, that's gonna be more his type." I know guys like Oli; he's in this kind of girl, or like. Mm -hmm. uh, Demi's not going to be his type. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, first of all, you don't know me. You don't know my dating. Right. And also, one insult to Demi and women that look like Demi for you to assume that I'm not going to be into her. And that's what frustrates me the most. You know, I've got I've got sisters and cousins that look, look like Demi. That I'm thinking like, you know what I mean? That's like, I've always been into more curvaceous women. And again, without putting, I don't want to get cancelled for saying the wrong thing, but I've never been into women that look like Kat. Uh, if out of them, like, again, you can read between the lines. Demi, Charlotte, Shirley, yeah. oh, those women that look like yourself, that's my type, okay? And again, usually curvaceous, but also slim, but like, put it this way, Kat was hitting none of the things physically that I'm into, yeah? Mm -hmm. And hey, that's no disrespect to her. There's no, no, no. Hundreds, if not thousands I, I, I want you to speak to that because why do you think, because I'm glad you said that is that is an insult to women who do look like Demi, mm -hmm. but also why do you feel that when women see a guy like you, they ultimately make the decision. I know exactly what type of girl he's into. He's into white women. Or if he's into a black girl, she's got to be ambiguous looking. You know, yeah. she can't have a certain, but she can't have, you know, too many curves. She can't have a little pudge. Why do you feel that women automatically assume that when they see a guy like you? I genuinely don't know. And I've, I, it's something I've struggled with all my life. Like I've literally been out in a club and moved to a dark-skinned woman before. And she's literally gone, oh, you, do you date black women? I'm like, I wouldn't be asking for your number if I didn't. Like, I, right. It's crazy that I have to prove this on a constant basis. Like, mm -hmm. the, the, that's my type. And I'm not lying or, or, or trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes when I say that's my type. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get what it is. I think there is obviously this stereotype about a lot of black men preferring white women especially light-skinned men yeah i don't know where it came from maybe there is some truth to it. i do know a lot of guys that look like me that, that do date white women exclusively and that's fine that's their preference but that's not me mm -hmm. so don't project those ideals and those beauty standards onto me because it's not what i go for you right. can ask any of my friends you can ask my mom any of my siblings they'll always tell you like i've never dated someone who looks like cat and i've dated plenty of women that look like demi plenty of women that look like uh charlotte plenty of women that look like shirley and that's the real truth so it was really, really frustrating, like seeing that narrative going around without anyone ever having dug into my date right. history, or even having asked me, like, oh, what is your type? Right. No one's ever actually asked me that. And yet they're making this assumption. And it's really frustrating because, again, it's like, why are we so, why are we, I don't get why in big 2024, mm -hmm. we're going, this is the beauty ideal. And anything outside of that is a bit like, oh, that's different. It's like, no, like, you can be into slim white women, you can be into curvaceous women of color. They're both as acceptable as, as the other. And, none neither one should be more believable than the other like if i say i'm into curvaceous women of color take my word for it don't why are you challenging that like mm -hmm. i felt like the whole yeah that's that was the most frustrating thing for me having to like if you want to call me a, a fuck boy and call me a this and that and he looks like this cool but to to start making assumptions about what kind of women i go for and then almost like degrading women that look like demi in the process i did not like that one bit that's something i really didn't that's something that frustrated me the most i was on the phone to my mum, like really angry about that you know just you know, you can you can tell your story eventually. So I'm glad I'm getting this opportunity. I'm glad that you are speaking to that because I think it's 2024, but unfortunately, like women like me, we do still have to deal with colorism. Like, of course, I'm in a relationship, and I made sure that my man was attracted to dark skinned women. Like, I I did that research because I have been in relationships or I have dated men who did not truly like my appearance mm. you know it's sometimes it's kind of like a let me just have this black woman so that people don't say nothing to me like even right, especially, right, the, right. especially like in the entertainment space you know we're dealing with like black women period like we're like we're fighting back against colorism like if you don't like black women we don't like you we're not going to support you mm. and so sometimes you do have a lot of men who are like you know what let me just do this to pacify other black women you know what i mean yeah i understand that yeah i understand so that sometimes we do unfortunately at at your expense we do carry that into other relationships and we don't give the guy a chance and then another thing too just to be quite frank we don't give a fuck what men think like like that's just how it be sometimes it's like 
we're so tired that we've gotten to the point where we don't give a fuck. Like we, you know, we automatically assume, and I'm not saying that that's right because it is being prejudiced. You are prejudging someone. Um, but just want to give the perspective of the, the female perspective to what you're saying. There's, nice. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of healing to do on both ends when it comes to that. No, I a hundred percent get that. That's a really, really valid point you made. And also I think it doesn't help. Let's be real. There are more, Margot Robbie's and Scarlett Johansson's pushed in the industry than there are uh, Lupita Nyong'o and you know Yaya Da Costa and women like that, like dark skinned women that are beautiful. Like we don't, we see more of the, the 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 sort of stereotypical Westernized vision of beauty. We see more of that on our screens, yeah. but that doesn't help. And then again, like you say, I think a lot of people project that onto other men and think, well, if that's what the media likes, then that's probably what he likes. Yeah. We need to be, I just think we need to be more appreciative of the fact that like some guys like slim women, that's fine. Yeah. Some guys like big women, that's fine. Some guys like dark skinned women some guys like white women that's fine but it's like if i say this is what i'm into that's what i'm into do you know what i mean it's, I, I, it was it was the assumption that really got to me and mm -hmm. the fact that people were challenging me over my my attraction when i actually got to like me being in person in greece so yeah. but yeah no it's like um <laughs> i've calmed down a little bit from where i was last week last week i was raging about it. yeah no i get it i get it because you do have to like not only do you, did you experience what you experienced we're going to talk about greece Mm. But you experience what you experience, and then also you have to go to socials and see the comments and see people automatically assuming he don't like. I don't think he's attracted to to, to Demi. I don't think he likes her. I think he. Do you think that your appearance also lends itself to people automatically assuming that you're a fuck boy? Like, a hundred percent. Like, let's be real. And I, again, I'm not. I'm not saying. Freddie's way more. Fr Freddie's way better looking than me. I'll, I'll put that out there now, right? But Both of y'all are good looking, but even Freddie dealt with that too. Like, even people people automatically assume he was gonna be a fuckboy too. Yeah, I think I think, and again, I, I don't want to I don't want to get in any trouble or, or or try and imply that I think that people have these crazy prejudices. But I think it's easier. Let me be careful. I think it's easier to paint someone like myself, who's got the skin fade and the beard, and I'm light skinned black, and I've got. And I wear the chains and the earrings, as opposed mm. to someone like Banaya, who's got the who's a, a white guy with long flowing hair, and he's a bit more of like a hippie type. I think it's very easy. It's a lot easier, sorry, I should say, to paint someone like myself as, as the typical fuckboy than it is someone like who looks like Banaya or Tom. And again, with Freddie, it could have possibly been done too because the guy's shredded. He's very good looking, but yeah. he's just got more of a sweeter energy. And and again, I was very like playfully cocky in the la in the lounge and things. So again, it, it kind of lends itself to that. But that's just why I'm. That's me being funny. I don't actually have that high opinion of myself. That's just how I play around. That's how I, be, I, um, I am. But yeah, I think because I've had, I've had it in real life. I've had it in online where people have been like, oh, you, you're just a typical fuckboy. You're just a typical London light skinned guy. Or I've had it online where people have been, I've met people in real life and they've gone, I'm not going to lie. From from when I first, first started speaking online, I thought you were this. I thought you were that. And now I've met you and actually you're this and you're that. So it's like, again, wow. I'm not saying I'm perfect because I'm not, but people do definitely judge me off the bat. And it's frustrating. Yeah. But yeah, again, sometimes I probably have played into that. Um, I have probably have there probably has been some truth to it at times in my life, but for the most part, I'm this person, and people want to believe I'm that person. Mm, okay, so let's talk about the person people believe you to be. You're in mm -hmm. y'all on the engagement moon, and things seem to be going pretty well with you and Demi until it's time to meet everybody else. Mm. And first thing, first meetup. You got Catherine who felt the need to let you know and everybody know that she was the one who broke things off with you. As a viewer, just from my perspective, I was just like, okay, girl, we don't care. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. We don't my care. Point exactly. My point exactly. We do not care. Um, but just want to get your perspective. And I thought you handled the conversation very very well you weren't Thank combative you. you weren't tit for tat you did kind of say well i don't recall the conversation going like this and i think it was tom that told her that mm. you said when you came back in the pot oh i broke things off can you kind of just like go through that with us and and let us know like you know how did you take that conversation and 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 what the end result of that conversation was yeah and i'm glad you touched on it so for me genuinely like the first I'd heard of this accusation that I went around saying I broke it off was in Greece. Again, we've got to Greece now, all the couples turn up. And I, and I mean this with full sincerity. I was just as excited to see Sabrina, uh, Jasmine, who else was there? M Maria, 
as I was cat. Like I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, I don't care about them, but I can't wait to see cat. I didn't care. Like, I, I was yeah. very curious to see what the women looked like because at some point I dated all of them in the pods. Right. Mm. So I was, I was curious to see all of them. And then next thing you know, Kat's going, oh, can I pull you for a chat? And I was like, huh, isn't that like kind of a, a Love Island thing to say? I didn't know that this was, right. didn't, how we have a good, I didn't know how we do things here. Like, I was like, yeah, I was like, what are we doing here? But cool, we'll go on then, we can go for a chat, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking and she's like, oh, I was a bit disappointed to hear that you said that you broke things off of me when that's not what happened. And I, my face was genuine. I was like, did I say that? And again, I'm never, I'm never the type of person, if you say, oh, you said this. I'm never the type of person to be like, that's not true. I've got a terrible memory, first and foremost. Like, mm, terrible okay. memory. Like, and it's problematic. But like, I'll always give someone the benefit of that and be like, do you know what? Maybe I did say that, actually, because I'm not going to sit out right and say, no, that's definitely what happened if I genuinely can't remember. So mm. I gave her the benefit of that and said, I don't remember. But if I did say that, I apologize, because that's obviously not what happened. And I'm happy to correct anyone that thinks that is what happened. Yeah. But looking back, I think what happened was because where I've been so certain that I was going to go in and break things off, and because Aaron knew that, so when he, I've come back to down, she's like, how did she take it? Or he said, how did it go? I'm like, she took it well. And what I meant was she took the entire breakup well. I didn't mean it to sound like, oh, I dumped her and she took it well. Okay. And then Connor, I think that's what, I think that's where the, the confusion came from. Because even when I was watching it back and me going, oh, she took it well, I was like, why did I say that? Because that's not, that's okay. not what I meant. But again, I think it was just a communication error. And then Connor's gone, oh, did you just have to break up with someone? Or did you just break up with someone? And I went, yeah. But I didn't mean it's in like, I broke up with someone. I meant. I broke up with someone, we broke up. I, but I think it's a linguistic thing. I really think it's down to semantics. But again, I think where, and we're cool now, but I think where like guys like Tom weren't too keen on me because I, I was quite cool with Sam in the early stages and they didn't, and I think they kind of carved me that same brush. So I think they were kind of like, oh, well, Ollie came in and was saying this. And I was like, again, if you want to. And then they started talking about, oh, he was trying to protect his ego. And that's not like, I was shouting from the rooftops, cat beat me too. I don't care. Like this is yeah. that's some school shit. Like yeah. who dumped who are we really doing that? It's like, who cares? I don't care. So yeah, it was never it was never about me trying to like protect my ego or trying to be like no no I don't I don't care like I, right. you know bother me but um she was obviously had a a, a bee in her bonnet about it wanted to talk about it and I was like yeah cool if I said that I don't think I did say that but if I did sorry no big deal yeah. I'm glad you you gave her that because I'm just like girl nobody cares and it just feels like an ego thing like who gives a fuck we are not mm -hmm. in middle school like we do not care y'all have both moved on so I didn't get the whole the whole gist of that, but I'm glad you reiterated that you really didn't care. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel that the conversation that y'all were having, that kind of did give to a lot of people like, oh, see, look at, he, look at how he's talking to her. See, that's more his type. And then you got Jasmine standing there with Demi and are you looking, are you looking? Mm -hmm. It just was so much going on. I'm just like, okay, this is fucking awkward. This is awkward as hell. And it kind of does put you in a position where you kind of do look like a fuck boy because here come the camera. So how did Catherine look? Mm. Is she what you expected? You know, like all that. So can you kind of speak to that in the sense that when you did finally meet her, like, you know, were you like, okay, may maybe I made a mistake or maybe I like, are the comments correct or you know you speak to what it was in that moment for you yeah like genuinely on my life and again i don't want to i don't want this to come across like i'm saying oh she's not attractive or she's ugly i'm sure there are like i said hundreds if not thousands if not millions of people up and down this country all over the globe that think she's absolutely stunning and that's yeah. fine and that's as valid as me saying that demi's stunning but she's just not my type cat is not my type mm -hmm. and so if anything it just further cemented the decision I already made in the pods, this isn't the goal for me. When I saw her, I was like, oh, she's, yeah, like even, I was even more, it, it cemented that even more. It wasn't like I was going, oh, what have I done? Like, I can swear on anything, everything that's near and dear to me, there was not a single part of me that was attracted to Kat. I thought she was a, 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 a kind of cool girl up until that point. Okay. Obviously things happened later on, which kind of maybe changed my mind on that a little yeah. bit. But like, I, there was no physical attraction, no sexual attraction whatsoever. Okay. And again, I'm not saying the producer did this deliberately or manipulated anything, but like, with a careful shot of me looking over into the distance, time uh, uh, coincidentally, yeah. time. Yeah. And again, I've got to speak on this. I've got to speak on this. Yeah, they got, they're, they're producing a show. They're making a show. They're producing a show. And, I, and, yeah. I, and again, I don't. But let me let me put it out there. They do a great job. I'm not of cut in any way, shape, or form. I don't think they deliberately tried to make me look a certain way. I've got all love and respect for the producers. But yeah, like you said, they're gonna they're gonna have the 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 they're gonna dramatize it a little bit. And yeah. I've got to speak on this yeah, because. <laughs> people are gonna think this is bullshit but it's genuinely true i have this weird thing that i do like mm -hmm. when i'm kind of just not really concentrating 
I, I put my tongue in the corner of my mouth. I don't know why. I kind of like, like, where my beard is here, yeah? I kind of like lick my beard hairs. And people are going to think that sounds like absolute bullshit, but oh, my life is true. So when you see me- It comes off like you're flirting. What, on what planet, right, would I ever be like, oh, she looks good, and then stick my tongue up to the beard. That's creepy as hell. Like, who the hell would do that? Like, I would have to have zero games. I think that's a way to try and, like, I'd have to be a monster to think that's a way to get a girl. It's it genuinely- like a thing that I just do, I do it around the house. I'm, I've stopped myself doing it now because I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, if that's how it's looking now, I need to stop that. But that is genuinely what I'm doing. I'm not stick. I'm not. My tongue's not hanging out my mouth because I'm drooling over this girl. I'm not trying to flirt with her. Mm -hmm. I get nervous, and, and again, I don't want to. Um, we're going to speak on this later, but like in in new environments, I do get a bit nervous and I do get a bit overwhelmed, and, and I'm not very good with eye contact. And I do look away, and I do twitch, and I do things like yeah. that. Maybe it's just who I am, or maybe it's because of the ADHD. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's, that speaks to how I was with Demi going back in the pool. You have to remember, in that scene where we're in the pool at night, we had known each other physically for about an hour. And now we're being put oh in, this, my God. in this freezing cold, by the way. It was, I know it was greasy and it was hot, but it was freezing cold in that pool at that moment. Um, we've got, I like, didn't even and, make that connection. So we Y'all yeah, just flown in separately. Now you get in the pool. Kiss. Huh? 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, need, we need to see. Let's get in the pool. I'm like, all right. And again, Demi, Demi. I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, is self-conscious of her body. She deliberately said, I don't want them filming me getting into the pool. I just want the, the scene to start where I'm in the pool. Okay. I didn't hit the gym properly in a few weeks. I wasn't feeling my best. Now we're in this freezing cold pool. We're face to face like this. We've mm -hmm. only just met. And also you have to remember, in the previous, in the lounge, all of the cameras were like fly on the wall. They were like CCTV. You didn't see them. Mm -hmm. Now we've got cameramen. They're like, hey, let's get a kiss. Or, hey, get a bit closer. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, it's nerve wracking. And, and I'm okay with eye contact from like, maybe like, here to where like the camera yeah. is for me now I can do that but when I'm when I'm here I find very, eye contact very very uncomfortable I always have and it is a symptom of ADHD I never I never wanted to sound like I'm making excuse but that's just genuinely the truth so when I'm here and I'm kind of looking away I find it uncomfortable and, and like I said I only know this girl for an hour so and then people go oh but it's funny how he didn't mind making eye contact with Kat when at the beach and I think it's also because Kat didn't mean anything to me. I'm more nervous around people Girl. that mean something to me. Me, me and Demi, me, that, that means something to me. So I'm going to get more nervous. I and I got it. more comfortable than everyone and the eye contact increased. But Kat didn't really mean anything to me. So I was like, yeah, I can look you in your eyes. It's not a problem. It doesn't fit. And plus, she, she wasn't sitting that close. So yeah, I know people are going to hit me up in the comments. Oh, he's a liar. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. But I, I've got nothing. At this point, as you know, the, the things out there, I'm not married to Demi. I've got nothing to uh, prove by saying mm -hmm. I, I wasn't attracted to Kat and I was attracted to Demi. Mm -hmm. I could tell the truth. If, if I was attracted to Kat, I could tell the truth right now. And I right. wasn't. It's not to say that she's not attractive, just not my type. So hopefully that clears it up. But yeah, yeah. There, was no, there was no deliberate flirting from my... I get, I'm quite a flirty person. So sometimes naturally when I'm talking to someone, there's a bit of a grin on my face and it might appear that I'm flirting. You know, maybe there was some... You Jamaican. Flirting. You Jamaican, Oli. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I now that I know you Jamaican... <laughs> <laughs> I certainly wasn't trying to move to her anyway. And also what people need to remember is Kat wasn't single. Kat was engaged to Freddie. I'm not going to try and disrespect Freddie like that. Freddie's my boy. Do you get what I'm saying? So, like, there's there's two reasons. Well, three reasons why I would have moved to Kat. One, yeah. Freddie. Two, Demi. And three, I wasn't attracted to her. So, if that doesn't tell a story, I don't know what does. Yeah, period. So, let's talk about just the other happenings that, well... We, we had Demi who did get kind of quiet, you know, that day and you guys kind of spoke to it too. And, you know, when we see you guys get in back to your room, she's like, you know, trying to explain why she she, was go, she got quiet and you're like, ah, let's go to bed. Like, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like were those conversations even awkward for you? Obviously it was awkward for you to be around everybody. Do you feel like, that kind of added to the awkwardness now in your relationship too? Um, Good question. I think now for me, again, that whole like, oh, it's late, let's go to bed. That, again, it's just a joke. I think a lot of people haven't watched the show don't know how to take me. Mm -hmm. Like, my humor's, like, if you know, like, everyone who knew me knew exactly what I was doing. I watched that scene with, like, my cousin, my mom, my best friend, one of my sisters, her part, and they all laughed because they all knew what I was doing. But to mm -hmm. the outside, I get why it looks like I'm just trying to dismiss yeah. the face, but I'm not. Um, no, like, again, there was the obvious elephant in the room when it came to the meetup in that my other connection was with Kat. And again, I was probably just kind of teasing Demi a little bit and being silly, but it's because I knew there was nothing there. It was, it was something I could play around with and it wasn't going to be a thing. Um, yeah, no, nah, like, it wasn't an uncomfortable conversation. I thought I'd actually reassured her more than got shown on camera. Again, there's only a finite amount of time that they've got to, yeah. to put. So, but I thought I did a pretty good job of actually saying to her, like, listen, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Kat's not my type. You're my type. 
I ain't, I ain't here for her. I'm here for you. Don't worry about it. Like, and I think that's probably why I played around with it so much. I didn't think, I genuinely didn't think I needed to reassure her more than that mm -hmm. because I didn't think it was a big deal. And also, again, not as much as it's got shown as I'd have liked. There was many times at the beach party where me and Demi were very, very tactile. In fact, if you go back, when Banaya and Nicole turn up, mm -hmm. the, it shoots to me and I've got my arm around Demi and we're holding hands. But it's like, oh. it's like they didn't show as much of it. I don't know if they did deliberately or if again, yeah. it was and then because even when you know what it, what it looks like, it looks like y'all were not touchy feely and and an, and another thing on that. So like there were, and I, I'm not blaming Demi for this, but there were many times at the beach party where I did go up to her and cuddle her and kiss her and say, "You okay?" And she was like, and she was being a bit off. And I don't think that's because of me. I think she's found the whole thing a bit overwhelming. Yeah, but like, someone's been overwhelmed. The last thing they want is more pressure. I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. Like, face. I didn't think it was an issue. And then another thing that didn't get shown on on the show was like in the early stages in the pod she was like oh my dad doesn't want to see me kissing on camera like like that oh. I'm gonna, and of course i'm gonna respect that yeah and i'm you know what i mean like, I, yeah. I get why he wouldn't want to see his little girl you know right tongue time with some guy that she you know what i mean so right. i was like cool i'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna respect that. On, on television yeah so I, I was already i was already made a point in my head to like try and keep the pda to a minimum anyway and plus my mom doesn't want to be seeing that and it's like mm -hmm. and also not everyone wants to do like i don't know i, I, get I feel it. like People were making way too much of that whole thing. because, and, and again, I think it speaks more to what they think, where they think Demi sits in the whole beauty standards as opposed to, to our actual connection. Because, for example, Benaira and Nicole, lovely, lovely couple, they weren't that tactile, but no one picked up that's on that. So, that's so true. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Tom and Maria good, are very, very tactile. Good comparison. Bobby and Jasmine, very, very tactile. Steve and Sabrina, quite tactile. Freddie and Kat weren't that tactile, but no one picked up on that because apparently they're, they're both so gorgeous that of course they're going to be attracted to each other. There's no, we ain't got to worry about that. But I felt like from early, all eyes were on me and Demi. And Fuck it. This whole like, is he going to be feeling that? Is he not? Is she too big for him? All this bullshit. And it's like, so I could, I could do no right from the, from the jump. It didn't matter what I did. People were going to be taking every, any little thing and amplifying and being like, oh, that means he's not attracted to her. Because, and I actually had, I'm not going to name who it is, but it was someone in the cast, when I, I confronted them by it, like later on, I said, what, what was your problem in Greece? Why would you assume that I'm not attracted to her? When, mm -hmm. when, we, when there seemed to be a disconnect, why did you assume I'd done something wrong? And they actually said, and again, I'm not gonna put them on blast, they actually said, well, you're the better looking one out of the couple, so of course they're gonna think you're not attracted to her. And I thought, one, that's such an insult. Was it Jasmine? Her. You ain't gotta say it, I feel like it was Jasmine. I'm not saying who it was. You ain't gotta say who it was, I feel like it was Jasmine, because we're gonna get the Jasmine's ass right now too, uh -huh. because, I was not feeling that whole moment with Jasmine. Like, I get wanting to be there for your friend, right? But the way she came at you, like, to me as a viewer, just putting myself in Demi's shoes, I would not ever want one of my homegirls going to my man and being like, you know Jess is insecure. You know how Jess feels about her body. You know, Are you not feeling her? Are you not attracted to her? If you're not feeling her, like, I thought that was way too much. Way mm -hmm. too much. And you were very composed. Like, okay. baby, I am a Haitian girl from Miami-Dade County. I don't know if you know much about <laughs> Miami-Dade County, but like, I'm not even from Florida. I'm from Miami-Dade County. Like, if she were to ever step to a dude from Miami like that, the way she would have got her ass handed to her, and rightfully so, because I just feel like she did way too much. But you composed yourself so well, and you reiterated your feelings for her and how you felt about how she looked. Why do you feel like she was not accepting that? Uh, I can. First and foremost, I want to say, like I said, yeah, well, obviously we know that but the viewers are not like i watched your video on that as you were reacting yes. to it as it happened and i was so 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 appreciative of the way you viewed it and the way you commented on it because i think you were spot on well i know you were spot on because i was there but it's like a lot of people aren't seeing what you were seeing and it's really really frustrating it's like um yeah she was doing way too much and again i don't have i mean i'm not i don't really talk to jasmine like that when you know i think that probably drove a bit of a wedge i don't have any issue with her and i don't i don't intend to have any issue with her especially out of respect for bobby yeah etc but like yeah like i think she was way out of line and she never actually apologized for it that that's one thing that annoyed me she, she didn't yeah. apologize nah oh no not even I mean, after it's aired nah like there was a moment where during one of the jasmine movies, you need to no jasmine you go i know you're gonna see that you need to apologize you yeah she was pretty trying to say she did there was a moment where like producers were like oh we, we'd love to get an apology on screen and she kind of said oh i don't really need to because this and i was like that's not really an apology and i was like yeah and then yeah 
She never no. actually came and apologised. And I think, I think especially now, having seen how bad it was, I think she definitely should have apologised and realised, oh, actually, that was worse than I thought. And again, I'm not trying to play victim. Right, I get it. It's it done. But like for me, it was like, I think, yeah, I think it, it, it spilled from wanting to have her friends back. It spilled over into more of like a hatred for me for some yeah. reason. And just like kind of, I don't know, I don't really know what it was that drove that whole thing. Because like, again, I specifically said, oh, no, you ain't got enough to worry about. Like, you know, I'm very attracted to Demi. We're good. And I have been reassuring her. End of. But like you said, no one wants, like, again, I'll say this to my boy. Like, if one of my boys ever went to my girl and was like, hey, what's going on with you and Ollie? You know how insecure he is. You need to reassure him. I'd be like, bro, I'm going to kill you. What are you talking about? Why would you do that? Like, like, why would you do that? Yeah. So, like, that wasn't cool. Um, And also, it was like, I specifically said, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but I specifically said to them, this is no disrespect to either of YouTube. I'm feeling very, very overwhelmed right now. Yeah. The only person I want to speak to is Demi. That should have been the end of the conversation. Right. That the end of the conversation. It didn't need to be... And again, what you're seeing on screen lasted for, what, three, maybe five minutes? In reality, it was probably more like 10, 15 minutes. They cut that right down. Oh, she, yeah. actually got a, she actually got a positive ed- edit, in my opinion, because in reality, that went on for a lot longer. Yeah. And again, I'm not trying to throw her under the bus, but she was, like, poking me and her, her hand was kind of in my face. I'm like, can you imagine a world in which I would go over to I'm Jasmine... Telling you. And be like, hey man, are you feeling Bobby or not? Are you feeling him or yeah. not? Are you feeling him or not? Where's your head at? Where's your head at? If you're not feeling him, just let me know. If you're not fit, fe- like, can you imagine a world in which that would be okay? No. So yeah. Again, I don't wanna, I don't want to go on about it too much because I'm a big boy and it's done, but it's like it annoys me that, that 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 got taken as me being defensive. It's like, of course I'm gonna get defensive. If, if I'm telling of you course. me and my brother good, and that's what annoyed me because when I when I eventually I did kind of snap a little bit, she's like, Oh, why are you getting pissy for? It's like You've been poking the bear. <laughs> You've been poking the bear for ten minutes, and then you're then you're confused that he's barked at your or, or sorry, scratching at you. You know what I mean? It's like, right. yeah, that that I didn't like that. But um, actually, I really really appreciate your take on. It. I think it was spot on. And again, in hindsight, I didn't realize how much ADHD affected me in terms of getting like overstimulated and feeling overwhelmed. But I thought I was, I, I knew I was feeling it, but I didn't link it to that per se. Mm. Um, but it was difficult. I was like that, and again, that's why I put the glasses on. I was trying to block everything out. I just didn't want to be there. And I was trying to make it very obvious to her that I don't want to have this conversation. I even tried to turn my body. I don't know if yeah. you can really see it on the edit, but like... No, your body I, language was very leave me alone. It was. Yeah. And, and the thing yeah. is, it was difficult because kind of what you said about like the Miami guys, in reality, if if one of my, my female friends or my cousins or whatnot was, was yapping to me, I'd be like, shut up, man. What are you going to for? And I'd yeah. But you can't do that on camera because then it's like, oh, he told a girl to show up. He's a misogynist. Oh, he's walked away. He's he's She's right. He can't take the heat. So I felt this real horrible pressure to be like, I can't really snap at her. I can't snap at Bobby and be like, bro, take your girl away, I beg. And I also can't walk away because then it's going to look like I'm running from the truth. So I had to literally just sit there and take it until Demi eventually arrived. Yeah. So it was a horrible situation to be in. And, and I was, again, we're cool now. And, I, and we actually did have a conversation about it on camera. It didn't make it to edit. Okay. But I said to Bobby, I said, bro, I'm disappointed in you, bro. I thought you was my guy. I thought you had my back. Yeah, I was, you- I was hoping he was going to kind of like step in. But when I see... Not only Jasmine, then, but then her mother in the show, mm. too. I'm like, oh, okay, so Bobby got that to deal with. Y'all, please pray for Bobby. Bobby got to deal with that. <laughs> so I get it, but also it's like there has to be a moment where you're like, okay, honey, like, I don't think it's ever cool for a man and a woman to argue, especially if that's not your man. Like, that is not your man. Then you got Demi coming in. She just getting herself a drink. She got to come back with this bullshit. She mm. don't know what the hell going on. It just was so much. And I felt that at the end of it, it goes back to what we've been talking about, which is just like how people perceive you because literally just because of the way you look. Yeah. And, oh, and, one, more, and one more thing, by the way, that was, that's not even the full story. So there's a few things to fit on. And again, I'm not trying to throw the producer under the bus. They've got, a, they've only got a certain amount of hours mm-hmm. they can put in. Prior to that, I'd have Maria come up to me and be like, oh, why aren't you treating Demi right? Or why aren't you doing this and that? And so, no, yeah, that's no, no. Like, yeah, yeah. And that was on camera too, but again, didn't make it in. And she basically said, I can't lie. Um, I've spoken to her now and I, and I kind of, I feel a bit better, but you know, I can't lie. When I saw you, I thought you were a fuck boy. And, but me and Marie were calling the pod. So I didn't understand why she's now saying, I've seen you and I think you're a fuck boy. I still no. don't trust you. So it wasn't just, so yeah, again, the hidden context is it wasn't just the Jasmine conversation. I already had it in the neck from, from Maria. Really? And as well, like, I'm not, again, I don't want to play victim because it is what it is, but like... No, my but, it's not a victim, but it does make it seem like, I even said this in my review, it makes it seem, when you have all these people coming at you, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, now you're going back to your partner. Like, girl, what are you telling these people? Yeah. 
and also sorry to, to to add on to that like they had been all kind of cold shouldering me a little bit and again i don't want to sound like i'm playing victim but like my best friends in the lounge were aaron a guy called jordan who didn't really see much and unfortunately <laughs> sam uh, again, fact, not you and baby uh, ring there becoming best friends no nah, listen listen the, the sam that i saw in the lounge was not the sam that you guys see on, on okay in the, oh you have to remember i wasn't in i wasn't at him with the I wasn't with him at the reveal. I wasn't with him in the pod. So that I didn't see that side of him. I was very, very disappointed when I saw that side of him. And right. we've had a conversation about that as well. But like the guy, the Sam that I knew in, in the in the lounge was a different guy. So they, they were like my friends in the lounge. And obviously none of them made it to the to the retreat. So instantly, even before we got to the retreat, I remember thinking to myself, oh, this is shit. Like none of my guys are here. And I remember specifically saying like, it's sad because when me and Demi are good, I haven't got my guys to celebrate it with. And if we ever hit the rocks, I haven't got my guys to lean on. So I was mm. already feeling that. And from from early, I felt like the guys kind of like turned their back on me a little bit because of my friendship with Sam. Obviously, there was a, the divide with oh, yeah. Sam, so like I was already feeling kind of like ostracized. You I think was going through all that. Yeah, so I was already feeling like these guys don't like me anyway. The girls don't like me now because they feel like I'm treating Demi badly. It was that on top of that, on top of that, on top of that. So I was like, what the hell's going on here? And then yeah, by the time Demi's joined the conversation, that's why I said to her. And, and again, people online were like, oh, he accused her of saying something. No, I didn't. I said what have you said? Have you said anything? And then when she right. said no, I said, no, I didn't think you would, but I've got to ask because what the hell is going on here? I thought yeah, we were getting course. on fine. It only makes sense. Yeah, I thought we were getting on fine. I noticed that she'd been a bit quieter, but, and again, there's a, there's a scene by the pool where I said to her, like, I didn't like you being quiet yesterday. That wasn't me saying, yep, oh, it's all on you. I just meant, babe, I don't like seeing that side of you. If, if, if there's yeah. something wrong, tell me more and I can reassure you. It probably came across wrong on camera, but it was, it was just more me saying like, listen, you know, if you're feeling away, that's fine. That's a human emotion. Just communicate to me. And then I can do a better job of communicating to you that you have nothing to worry about. That's what I meant by that. But yeah, no, like it's, it was a lot. Greece was a lot. That's why I was just so keen to, I was ready to to, to, to be done with the whole thing. By the oh, way. Really, oh really when you got up and walked away, when, when you sashayed away, I said that maybe this man is done. I wasn't expecting to see you again. And oh. then when we see you talking to her the next day and saying, man, like, this I, I'm so happy they left that in the show because you say this experiment really might not be for us because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, yes, you guys are here to find love, but it is an experiment. And part of the experiment is also dealing with all these other people. Mm -hmm. And now all these other people have their mouths in what you and Demi have going on. So y'all are not just affected by you two and your dynamic together. But you got to deal with Maria, Jasmine, Baby Reindeer, everybody else, like everybody coming in saying what they got to say. And it makes things a little more difficult. Like, so I totally get why you were over it, but you stayed. You yeah, stayed. No, I, we, and, and by the way, when I said we, I'm going to leave, I never meant leave her. I meant let's leave and do our own thing outside. Oh, yeah. I got yeah, you. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm, glad we, I'm glad we stayed. I'm glad we stayed. And again, the whole storming off thing. I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want, to, I don't want people to speculate, but there was something else that got revealed to me that some, that, I like I'll talk about it. Basically, she said that like, oh, apparently you had said that you can have any girl you want in the lounge. And I was like, well, who said that? And she's like, oh, I can't say. And that's when I was like, you know what, fuck this. These don't like me. They're trying shit about me. That's when I stormed yeah. off. That didn't make it to the edit too. So it was just, it was just a mountain of things. Huh? Who said that? I still don't know. I still don't know. No, but who said it to you? Oh, Demi did. So when Demi was saying- Oh, no. Like, so why did, what? Yeah. Okay, so it, it just seems like they had this perception of you, and it's like in their minds, they're saving Demi. Yeah, like, it's this whole like that's what it comes across like. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, Demi's an absolute sweetheart. Like the, the the amazing edit that she's getting is very, very true to life. That is she really is an amazing person, beautiful inside and out. So I'm not mad at them painting her out to be this angelic figure because she is, she's an amazing person. But like mm -hmm. it was almost that they couldn't picture the fact that actually she might find a good guy too. I don't know, it was really weird. It's like, I know you're wrong, I've said it before. I'm not perfect, like, to a degree. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not paying myself out to be perfect, but I don't think I was anywhere near as bad as they were trying to make me out to be in Greece or as bad as they're trying to make me out to be online. But it is yeah. what it is. I can take the rough with this movie. It is, it is what it is. Well, you're doing a good job. You, you handled it very, very well. Going back to you just, you know, taking the beat and taking the lashings and then getting up. I'm glad you did that because I do fear that had you reacted the way others would have reacted, then that would be the footage that we'd be addressing today. And so oh, 100%. kudos to you for staying composed, especially as a black man on television, like kudos to you because I feel like some people would have definitely lost their shit. Mm -hmm. um, now you guys are back home. 
and y'all are living together now. And I love the conversation that you had about ADHD. What made you feel comfortable enough to trust her with that information and to share that with just the world? Yeah, it's an interesting one. So she first picked up on it in Greece because, and again, I don't want to sound like spin, I'm spinning some victim story, but when I would get really stressed out from the, the mix of parties or from just the day in general, I would go back to the villa. We had the beautiful villa. We all had our own uh, individual villa. We didn't share with anyone else. Mm -hmm. And we had this big infinity pool, this big kind of like back garden. And I would just pace up and down the pool, like by the pool side. I was so stressed. I would just pace up and down. And, that's, and again, wow. that's a very ADHD slash autism kind of trait, that kind of like... Um, those kind of repetitive mo movements and things like that. And she was like, she'd come out and be like, what are you doing? Like, why are you out here pacing? I'm like, oh, I'm just, oh, I'm annoyed about this. And she's like, okay. And she'd lead me to it. And then she'd come back out and I'd still be pacing half an hour later. And she'd be like, babe, you got to come in. Like, this is silly. Like, and I'll do that most days when I'm getting stressed about the way they treat me. Like, that's the first thing I did when, when I got back from that rooftop yeah. party. I went, I went back and I was just pacing and just thinking things through. And I think that's when she first started to twig, like, yeah, there's, there's some yeah, neuro neuro diversity here. Um, mm. and then when we go back to London, she's picking it up again. And she kind of said to me, like, what's with the pacing? What's with the, 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 you don't seem to like regulate your emotions very well. You don't seem to handle like being overwhelmed very well. You, you seem to get overstimulated. And, and I knew what she was alluding to. And I was like, oh, now nah, we talk about you. I, don't to, I didn't want to talk about it. It was never my intention to talk about this thing. If it had been, I would have probably spoken about it in the pods. So again, I don't want people thinking I'm out here trying to make excuses or trying to like spin a sob story because I have no intention of ever speaking about it to Demi, let alone the world. Yeah. Um, no, but, but we need to talk about stuff like this because I do feel like, I kind of jokingly said this in my review, I feel like a lot of men have ADHD mm -hmm. and I kind of jokingly said it, but there ha there is a lot of research, especially um, tied to black boys, like young black boys having these sort of, you know, um, issues when it comes to this, just their attention deficit, like having a, a deficit in their attention span and how they deal with that. And I think that you saying that, I really hope like in the long run, people really grow to appreciate that because when you said it, and then when I kind of look back at how you dealt with a lot of the things that you were dealing with, you could see it. You mm. could see it. And so I think it was a powerful thing to share. So kudos to you. Thank you so much. I think you can see it's funny because like um, some people, I think people who know about it go, of course he's got ADHD. Look at, he was doing cartwheels in the pods. He was, he was like, you know, like he was, yeah. uh, look how he got overstimulated in Greece. And like, yeah. if you know, you know, but I think, so a lot of people, it didn't make sense until I kind of said it. And, and um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really glad I spoke about it because the feedback was unreal. I'd, I didn't expect to get what I got. Like my DM yeah. was, my DMs were full of people saying. Yeah, I have it too. But, yeah, like my 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 son's got ADHD. Like this really helps me understand him a bit more. I wish more people would talk about it. Or I've mm -hmm. got ADHD. I completely understand where you're coming from. I really related to it. The way you the way you articulate it was perfect. This is gonna raise awareness. Like so many really really beautiful DMs, yeah. and comments, the really really thing. Like do you know what? Like if I, if it's genuinely had that effect on people, I'm yeah. glad. And it's funny because I saw another um, video from some guys, and I've seen a couple of tweets where it's like, oh, ADHD, big deal. Everyone's got that. And I'm like, if you don't have it, you don't understand how difficult it is to deal with. It is exactly. really difficult. That it is difficult. It's like exactly. it's not. It's not. You know, I'm still physically able and things like that. But it does affect me every single day. It does, of it does course, make day a big some people day. have it worse than others, but you still have to deal it. Deal with yeah. it. Yeah. So I didn't really like people downplaying or making out like I was trying to do it like some soft story. Like I say, I never planned on talking about it. She asked me about it on camera. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. To her. So again, it makes it look like I say it, but she goes. She, I think in real life, what she actually did say is, I'm. I'm thinking, do you have ADHD? And I went. Yeah, I do have ADHD. That's what how, how it really played out. So it's, it wasn't me offering the information up. Yeah, I never plan on talking about it. But again, I'm glad I did because it helped her understand me better. Yeah, hopefully it's helped the viewer understand me a bit better. So it when I start getting, her, when I'm like, yeah, picking that up too. Oh, that's that's how smart she is. I think because she previously worked with um children with special educational needs and things like that. So she's got some experience in it. But yeah, she picked. I couldn't believe how quickly she picked up. I've dated some people for years and, and they've never... They know. They probably picked up on my traits, but not knowing that that's what that is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she's very, very astute, very intelligent. And um, that's why we aware. love Demi over here. We love Demi over here. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. We love um, Demi over here. This is a Demi Stan account. <laughs> I, think, I think every account is a Demi Stan account. I'm, 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 I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want it any other way. In fact, some idiot was on my comments today saying something negative about it. And I was like, if you want to no. trust me, now, that's cool. You're not going to come onto my page and disrespect Demi. That's not going to no, happen. No, no. Demi, De Demi deserves the world. She's really just a, a really good woman. Mm -hmm. um, and 
So now you guys are back home. We meet Demi's friends. We mm-hmm. meet her parents and her siblings. We didn't meet your friends or your parents. We met okay. you at wedding day. But like, where were your friends? Where was your family? Like, why didn't we see them in the experiment? Uh, so two of my best friends were on the show and they didn't make it to the edit. Again, that's very, very important. Yeah, it's very, very important that I speak. But wait, were you and Aaron friends before? No, I met Aaron in the pods. Okay. And that's friends, but two of my very best friends, a guy called Michael and a guy called Norbert, came on the show. We went for drinks with Demi. Then we went back to the apartment and had and continued the conversation, but it didn't make it to air. Again, they've got limited. It happened to somebody else as well. I'm not going to say who it is in case they don't want me to mention it, but it happened to somebody okay. else where they brought their family on and they didn't make it to the edit. Again, I don't think the producers are trying to do any manipulating, I think. I get it. Um, I was told it was because of audio issues, so I've, I've got no choice but to believe them. But um, that scene didn't make it to the edit. Um, but yeah, she did meet she did meet two of my best friends. It was, it was, she I did was, meet two of your best friends. Yeah, I'm getting so much I'm getting so much heat. Like, oh, Ollie's not a real one because he didn't even want to introduce her to, to his friends. Like, no. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I'm like, now hold on, where his friends at now? Nah. Yeah, and where I have his got friends, friends at now. Nah. <laughs> where the but, friends um, at? And again, she did meet my mum in on a scene as well. But again, I don't want to go into it too much because like my mum she met your mother. Yeah, but like we we were actually the ones who said, "Oh, we we don't know if we're comfortable with that scene being shown because um, okay. I'm very very protective of my family being out there full stop." Okay. And, and my mum, on reflection, was like, "Actually, I don't really want that scene. I'm I'm really dreading having my face out there on big big Netflix." So that scene didn't get shown okay. either. Again, that's no that's no manipulation from the producers. So those okay. scenes did happen. So again, this whole like, "Oh, Ollie's trying to hide Demi from his friends and family" isn't true. Um, oh. And also, this is the thing: like, people need to understand this, right? Not everyone wants to be. On Netflix is viewed by billions of people. Not everyone wants to have that kind of exposure. So have two of my sisters were asked if they went to meet her. Some of the other parents from previous seasons have gone through, like... Exactly. I, yeah, so it's like, while mm. selfishly, I would have loved to see that, but mm. kudos to you for protecting your parents, too, because maybe Jasmine's mama is getting the business. Well, this is what I'm about to say. Look at yeah. what Jasmine's mom's going through. And, yeah. and again, like... I'm not saying I'm I'm Jasmine's best friend, but I don't want to see her going right. through that. Her mom have to do it. That's not nice. No one wants that. Yeah. And um, you know, even down to like uh Tom spoke about this too. Like his he, he introduced Maria to his mom, but specifically off camera, because again, his mom doesn't want to be on Netflix. Not everyone wants to be mm-hmm. on the biggest streaming service in the world. Like it's 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 nerve wracking. Yeah. One of my sisters was heavily pregnant during during the time, so she didn't want to be on camera. She you see her in the background in the wedding. Okay. Um, other- worked in the field of mental health so b- to protect her sort of professionalism she didn't want to be associated with the show again i understand that you have you can't do you know what i mean it's like i think okay. people need to respect that and again some of my friends couldn't make it to the wedding a lot of my friends are professional fighters they can't take time out of a fight camp to, to go it. all the way it was four hours from london by the way where we got married it wasn't like, was like it? uh like middlesbrough darling like very very far up north okay like, a good four hour drive like they can't be and so you had to stay overnight twice probably if i last yeah i stayed two nights i can't be asking my professional athlete friends in the middle of a fight camp to take that much time out of, out of training. Um, and yeah, like people have got scheduled. My, my cousins couldn't make it because they got work. My other sister's got kids. Like it's not that easy to get people to, to go halfway across the country at short notice. You know, yeah. I've them to have been there and, and they would have been too, but there you go. Okay. So that, cause I was going to go off on a tangent about that, but you, you addressed that. So now we're here at the wedding day. And that kind of explains why we see, well, actually, before we do the wedding day, before we go to the wedding, there was the meetup. There was the meetup where no. <laughs> everybody's coming in. We see Charlotte come in, child. Charlotte seemed to be a hit with mm. everybody. And we see Charlotte come in and you. we see you. Who is that? And then, you know, we have Aaron coming in. Oh, you know, if you were to meet anybody and they was to look better than Demi, you know, what would happen? What would be your, you know, what would be your stance on that? And then, boom, Charlotte makes it. And you're like, you know, she's sublime. I might not, Oli, don't piss me off. Like, do not piss me off, Oli. I was like, why he had to say all that? Now, she's pretty, okay? She's good looking, but damn. Why she had to be sublime? You know, right. <laughs> what this going let, me, let me talk on that. Let me, let me talk on that. <laughs> So there's a couple things. There's a couple things. I don't even know it's being. All right, cool. Here's the thing. So with the cat, um, with the Charlotte situation compared to the cat situation, I don't mind taking heat for the Charlotte situation mm-hmm. because what you saw happened. I don't like taking heat for the cat situation because like they're trying to spin it like oh, I'm so attracted to her and I wasn't. Okay. Was I attracted to Charlotte? Yes. Do okay. I deserve heat for the way I spoke about her? Yes. Bring it on. Like I, I don't mind. Ta- I don't mind going to jail for something I did. I hate. Go- I don't want to. Go- no one wants to go to jail. No one wants to go to jail. Full stop. 
But if you're going to go to jail, at least let it be for a crime I committed. Seriously. Come at me for the Charlotte situation. I said what I said. I did what I did. That was wrong. That was inappropriate. Don't come at me for the cat situation because that wasn't, you're, you're trying to make something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think it, it makes a bit more sense with the hidden context that me and Charlotte dated right up until pretty much the end and we had a strong connection. I had to break it off of her and she was very, very upset. In fact, she was so upset she left the experiment that moment. She didn't even continue. Yeah. So that's, that's the context that people don't get. Yeah. So obviously when I we saw don't her, be knowing, we don't see, we don't be knowing this. That's what I'm saying. And, and again, like, I hope I'm getting in trouble for, for, for talking about this. No, again, I'm, 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 not, time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not revealing any dark secrets or anything. It's yeah. just like, like I say, producers can't put everything in. Um, so that was, that there was that context behind it. And then obviously it was when I saw her, I'm like, oh, bro, that's Charlotte. Like that's the person I had a connection with. And yeah, she was beautiful. And, and my head was spun for a little bit. And you know, my bad, like that's, that's not good on me. And I can admit that. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually had a conversation which didn't get shown. So it wasn't like I just went, raw. she looks good. Oh my day, she's this. I had a conversation with her. And then afterwards, everyone's like, what's going on? I'm like, look, don't get me wrong, she's stunning, but I'm good with Demi. That's what I was saying. Yeah. And yeah, did I go overboard with the compliments? <laughs> you did, you did, you did, but you did reel it back and say no. Like, because here's the thing, too, I think, and me included, sometimes we want our men to be blind to everybody else. Like, you know, like, again, like I, I'm in a relationship right now. My man mm -hmm. is not blind. He's going to see other attractive women and I'm going to see other attractive men. But at the end of the day, like my man, like Mr. Easter, that's my man. Like that, that, that's my future. Like, I don't care how good you look, I'm going home to my man. And mm -hmm. I think that that's what you were saying as well. At the end of the day, I have eyes. Mm -hmm. I have eyes. She look good. But at the same time, Demi has my eyes and my heart. So we yeah. can't forget that you said that at the end. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's important. Yeah, like I went over the the oh, the me going overboard with the compliments, that's more like an in joke between me and Demi. Yeah, Aaron. I get it. Do you get what I'm saying? That's that's amongst boys. And it, uh, here's the thing as well, like, yeah, I got heat for it, but it's like you think other guys don't do that regularly when they're out of the bar. Like, oh my god. Yeah, but the difference obviously is it's it's made to look way more way worse because now here I am on camera and it's, it's not busy. Do you get what I'm saying? But like I'm not I'm not trying to excuse it, but ultimately I didn't act upon those feelings physically in that mm -hmm. moment. So yeah, it's not like I said, Oh, she's this, she's that, and I might leave Demi here and leave. Like, nah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, nah, but I'll take I'll take the heat for that because it was disrespectful. Because uh, um rightly so I, I I probably wouldn't feel great if if there was a scene where Demi's gone, Oh my days, is that Freddie? He's this, he's that, and I'm stood over <laughs> right. there. But at the same time, I also wouldn't blame her for thinking that. But yeah, nah. um, yeah. yeah, I dropped the ball on that one. But I can take the heat for that because it actually happened. I don't mind that. Yeah, you are being human. It's it's like, I feel like at the end of the day, that's why I wanted to have this talk to. You're a human being. You're a human being. And I think what makes a very good show, especially like a show like Love is Blind, is when you go in there and you're not trying to, 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 um, please the masses go in there if you think she's sublime she's sublime that's it and it's Blind. like um, she's sublime like that that was <laughs> that, was quote there, so like, it's gonna, that quote is gonna semi-viral you know the amount of time yeah like was, listen uh, people are gonna problem, be but... using that people are gonna use that as a meme like it is what it is now I'm fast I'm now because now i feel like if i date a girl and i don't call her mad berserk and sublime she's like, oh so I'm, I'm not charlotte now i've got to be like okay yeah you're just as i've got to come up with some new words like Serena from Love Island said, you made your bed, now hump in it. Now, when you have a relationship, <laughs> you better make sure you let her know how sublime, how mad, how berserk she is. You know the, the energy you got to bring forward. Period. I know, I know. I'm in trouble. <laughs> so, finally, we get to the weddings. We mm -hmm. get to the weddings. And I like the moment with you and your father. We meet your father, and you and your father share a drink. You guys share rum. That's so Jamaican. So Jamaican. <laughs> so Jamaican. But you guys share rum, and you know your dad is telling you how how much he loves you, how he's proud of you. And there's a moment where you said that, like, you know, your dad usually doesn't say these things to you, so that's obviously the rum talking. Do you feel that? dads and just in general should do a better job of telling their sons like i love you i love you because it doesn't that make it easier for them the son to carry that into their relationships that's a really good way of putting it and yeah i 100 agree and it's funny because um i love that scene at, at the time i remember thinking to myself oh, i'm dreading that coming up because again i'm so protective of my family being yeah. out there open to criticism ultimately this is my journey so it should be yeah. put out there but like the response to, to that scene has been 
has been nice. So, but yeah, I was really, really nervous about that scene. But now I'm like, I remember someone saying, oh, bro, that, that scene with you, that's really nice. And I'm like, do you know what? Yeah. I'm so glad I got that because now I've got a beautiful scene with me and my dad in 4K HD for the rest yeah. of my life. I've always got that and it is nice. Um, but yeah, like him saying that, and I wasn't lying when I said that. I don't, and this is no insult to him. I can probably count on one hand the amount of times he sort of said those kind of things to me. And I don't yeah. think he feel this because, but again, he came from, again, he was born and raised in Jamaica, came over here when he was fairly young. But when he came, complicated story, but you probably know um, being from the Caribbean. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm Haitian. I'm an, immig I'm an immigrant. I have immigrant parents. I get it. Like, even in our culture, I love you. It's just like, just say it. Like, why is it yeah. so hard Like to just say, I love you? It's kind of like they don't want to be mushy with you. They want to have that strong hand and they want to guide you in the world and they want you to go into the world and be strong. But sometimes like just not being able to say that, you know, it affects you. And I want to know like you as a man, mm -hmm. do you feel that your dad kind of like withholding that from you? Has that made it hard for you to share your love in relationships? Mm, yes, I know. It's funny because like, again, it's like, yeah, I can remember the time during that scene when he was like, oh, I love you, I'm proud of you. I, remember, I can remember looking like, why are you doing this right now? <laughs> you're trying to do it and cry on camera or something. You don't say, you haven't said this in years and you're going to you're gonna wait till I'm on Netflix to say this. What are you trying to do to me? Like, I can remember thinking that. I can remember thinking like, you asshole, why are you trying to do this to me now? Like, you could have said this yesterday and I'd been, I'd been ready for why? it. But yeah, no, nah, I think, I don't think it's, I don't know. I think it's been counterbalanced by my mum who's very, 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 uh, forthcoming with her words and forthcoming with I love you I'm proud of you you can do anything you're amazing I'm so glad you're my son I yeah. miss you all of those things so I think had it just been if I'd maybe had two versions of my dad if you like a, a mum and dad who were just like that then probably but I think I was able to get the the very like forthcoming with words from my mum but again there probably is a part of it that does play into it yeah. the way my dad was. and again I don't think he was ever cold per se I just don't think he really knew how to do it because his yeah. parents his parents were the same like I've still got um I still got his mum, my grandma in my life, and she's the same. She's softened up a bit with old age, but she's a very strong, hard woman. Again, typical Jamaican Jamaican yeah. woman in, in a sense. But like, yeah, it's um I don't know. I but I do agree with what you said earlier. Like I do think more dads need to be more like hands on with their sons. I tell them I love you. And I've got a, one of my best friends, I love seeing him with his son because he's very much like that. He's kind of broken that cycle where he does oh. cuddle, he does give him a kiss on the head and say, I love you, son, I'm proud of you. And it's like, yeah, like we need to break that cycle. We need to be more yeah. like that. And um and I, I'm, I'm the same with my boy as well. I think like, we, we should be able to say that. Do you hear your homeboy say, I love you, of I course. love you, bro? Okay. Of course. I give him a hug and say, I love you, man. I'm proud of you. Like, whether they've just got a promotion or want to fight or whatever the case may be, I say, oh, bro, I love you, man. I'm so proud of you. Doing, you're, you're killing it, man. Like, That's like so yeah, you, you, you'll probably even see it in my comments when they come out. And, you know, like, I feel there's, there should be no, there's no, like, compromise to your masculinity or your or how hard you are by saying, bro, I love you, man. I'm proud. Like, why would I not? You know, so... We need um, yeah. black men to feel good about saying, I love you, bro. I love you, son. Like, I just want to see more of that when it comes to black men because we love you. And mm. so we want you to go out into the world and, and feel love and then express love. Like, that's just such a good thing. It's so healthy. And so I did really, really appreciate that moment with your father. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, I appreciated it a lot. And so now we're down to the aisle. We're down mm. to the aisle. Demi's coming down to the aisle. She looks gorgeous. She's outstanding. Know, she looked great. And, you know, in the suite before she gets to you, she talked about the fact that you guys were not communicating before, you know, getting to the wedding. What happened? No, that's, again, I don't, I've got to be really careful because I don't want to throw her under the bus and, and, and say that she's lying or telling the truth. But, like, I've gone back and checked and it's not true. Like we were talking, so I don't understand it. I don't know if she meant we weren't. I don't know if again they they edit to make it look like she said that when actually she said we haven't spoken as much. Okay. But okay. We were speaking every day. We were speaking every day. Okay. Like got, I, I would never would do this, but like I have got the message to say we were speaking every day. Okay. Maybe she meant I didn't call her as much, but we would certainly like what's happening every yeah. single day. Um. So I don't know. Maybe she's meant. Maybe she was disappointed in that there could have been more contact. So I appreciate where she's coming from. Now. Face I'll never were you FaceTiming? Were you? No, nah, we weren't. We weren't. And maybe that's what she meant. Maybe she was. Okay. Like, there's, a, there's that scene when I said, oh, we're going to have to FaceTime, innit? And then maybe I dropped the ball. But again, it was also like, okay. why is there so much onus on the man to do this? And the man, you ain't got my number? You can FaceTime me. I'm going to answer. Now, Oli, 
Now, come on now. No, no, don't not do this. only. Don't do this. I'm back so far. Listen. <laughs> come on. Not only do not make me get off the only train now. Now, come on now. But what I'm saying is, we were talking every day. Mm -hmm. I'm not. The, I'm not the kind of per like most most guys are not going to pick up the phone and be like, "Baby, let's Facetime." That's like that's what women normally initiate. If I'm if I'm messaging every time every day, where well, you can't say, "Oh, we're going to Facetime tonight." Yeah, cool. Go ahead. No, nah, my man Facetimes me. Ah, that's different. I, me, I've never been a Facetime kind of guy. It might <laughs> maybe it's the eye face. contact thing. Maybe it's the eye contact. I don't like this. Okay. You know what I mean, but like. Okay. Yeah. Again, maybe maybe FaceTime, maybe I'm remembering it wrong, so but we, like we're constantly in communication. So maybe there was a loss of translation of trans uh, communication between both of you as far as like the the communication who bears the communication yeah you know? like so maybe because you weren't facetiming her or like reassuring her for her she felt like okay this man ain't talking to me so now we down to the aisle i don't like she's probably going in thinking you're not gonna say yes no, I understand that. I understand that. I, I, can I, you I, see you know. the correlation with that? And then her, and I can yeah. only apologize. I can only apologize to her for that. Like, I never wanted to make her feel like uncomfortable in in any regard, least mm -hmm. of all like on that day. Um, yeah, like I say, I dropped the ball on many occasions during this process. I've never once said like I'm perfect. I don't think I'm yeah. as bad as some of the comments. The truth is always somewhere in the middle. Some people are saying, yeah. "Oh, he's amazing. He's a perfect gentleman." Some people are saying, "I'm a scum of the earth." The truth is somewhere in the middle, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, there were times when I think I held myself well, times when I probably dropped the ball, and times when I probably didn't handle myself the way I could have done. And yeah, I probably should have been a better communicator between the experiment and the wedding because we had the longest gap, by the way. So some really? people. Didn't, How long yeah, was that? About a week. Oh, come on. Only no, a week and you ain't FaceTime? I don't know. I can't remember, but I thought we did. But like, what I'm getting at is, I get why that felt like a long, long time because some people literally left the experiment. I think on the Friday. Holy! This is why I didn't get my wedding from y'all. Listen, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. Listen, I don't think. I think as much as, and I still have so much. I, listen, don't, don't do this. Not now. I've had you. Like, don't flip on me now. Don't flip on me now. I've had you. Don't, don't let me lose you now. Come on. Okay. We're okay. Good. Okay. Come listen, back. Okay. So, so my. Fill me is, in. My thing is this, my thing is this. I've got so much love for Demi, even up until this point, genuinely. Um, and anyone who wants to question that, I don't give a shit. Like, I know how I feel about her. I think she's an amazing person. Even from the trailer, when she was like the star of the trailer, I remember um, saying to her, like, you are the star of this show, you know, and I'm so oh, yes, proud of you. I'm so happy for you. Like, I can see it already. You're going to blow from this and I can't wait. I, like, I was genuinely more invested in how she was going to come across than how I was going to come across, genuinely. And even now, I think to a degree I am. Because I can take the rough of this movie, it is what it is. But like, I'm so happy to see she's getting like a, I would say like a 99.9% .9 approval rate. And I love that for her. Yeah. Um, but I just think on reflection, I, and I spoke about this before, I probably wasn't in maybe in the right head, as, as good a headspace as I thought I was going into the experiment mm -hmm. in, in, in place to, to get married. Um, Do you feel that when you guys had that break, you had yeah. been so stimulated that now you just had a moment to chill and maybe you just ch chill too hard? Maybe, I think, I'll be real, like, I remember coming back to this very flat, obviously, and, and it, my flat never felt so empty, my flat never felt so cold, my flat never felt so quiet. Mm -hmm. Like going from like, cameras in your face 24 seven, going from obviously Demi being in my space 24 seven, me and I'll be there with the others, having, being encouraged to go on dates. Oh. Now, and now being back in this flat where everyone's checking for me, I'm, I'm alone. It, it felt really, really weird. And it maybe it was a bit of a head fuck, but I think I take accountability for the fact that things didn't go the way they should have done. Mm -hmm. I, um, but ultimately, I don't think it says anything about how we feel about one another, personally. No. Um, and I said that, which you'll, you'll see coming up on the arena. I said, I don't think it, it, it says anything about the love or adoration we have for each other. I think it probably, I can take the accountability for not being in the right headspace. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not handling myself the way I should have done at times. But at the same time, I, ge I genuinely think it was the right decision for us at that time. Um, yeah, and I think on reflection, I don't, I don't have any major regret. And I yeah. think, I don't know, it's, it's, it's crazy, I can't lie. And, and people think I'm bullshit. But when I watch the show back, you do start to fall in love with her all over again because you're, you're seeing oh, your journey yeah. again. Yeah, and after all, like you're, you're watching your wait, journey wait, again. Wait, so because let wait because we're we're going back. Let, let me just stay at the wedding for a moment. So sorry, sorry, sorry. Obviously, she idea. says no. It's okay. Obviously, she says you know not now, and you 
when you took that step back and you were like, why? Like that shit was hilarious to me. I'm so yeah, it, was. <laughs> it, was fu- it was fucking funny, but also I was there like, okay, why? You know, because I did feel like no matter what, yeah, you guys had your ups and downs, but y'all did seem to connect. And mm. then later on, you have Aaron, who you're talking to. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron to me was a little, a little messy. Like he was getting all the little tea from you. He was doing what he had to do, but he was like, you know, you. How do you feel? Like, do you feel sad but happy? And you were like, you know what? I saw myself just saying yes, and basically, like, if if we were to separate later on down the line, then we would just separate. Like, do you feel that? your reasoning for being married do you feel like that was enough i feel like i feel like maybe i'm not answering your question directly but i feel like in that moment i kind of felt sad because i felt sad for myself sad for my family sad for her sad for her family the the wedding the marriage wasn't taking place of course um and i was sad like i wasn't i feel like my circumstances were kind of preventing me from being able to lean into that side of things as much as I wanted to. And then at the same time, I was kind of like, the reason I was saying I'm still a little bit happy is because no matter what, I don't know, maybe it's that kind of, that, like what I was alluding to earlier about if I have kids, great. If I don't have kids, great. It's like, I was trying to be positive no matter what the outcome is. And no one, no one can take away from the fact that I had an amazing time, yeah. made some amazing friends, met her, learned a lot about myself, went on this amazing journey that most people would be too scared to even embark upon. And... You know, I know it sounds cheesy and I've said it in a couple of interviews before, but like I'm walking away with like a head full of memories and a heart full of love. Like if that if that makes if that's something I'm supposed to be sad about, I'm not going to be like mm-hmm. no matter what, no matter what. Yeah, it's not ideal. But I, I don't I don't want to do this whole like, oh, first place marriage, second place uh, engaged. Right. Third, like I don't want to like make a hierarchy of how I should feel. I want it to be like, well, if you feel good and you still like, I don't know, like I didn't want to be like winners and losers, married and married or not. Like it's. Yeah, I didn't want there to be that kind of like it's kind of like a false dichotomy where it's like if if you there's only one or the other, it's actually no, you can still not get married and be in a good place. And I think a lot of people have reflected on that in the comments and said, Your no, your non marriage was the most beautiful one we've probably seen in the entire series. It was it was Adrian Max, she didn't walk off, it was none of that. It was like we we embraced, and I still, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a it was no disrespect. Like the thing is, even though y'all didn't get married. And I, I wasn't shocked by y'all not getting married. I was I was gagged that at how it happened, but I wasn't shocked. But I was very proud of just how you both conducted yourselves with each other, especially like, and you know, every, every as a black woman watching black people, I just love when we get a good representation of ourselves on television. Like, Mm. yes, y'all are not perfect, but there was no disrespect. There was no overstepping of boundaries. Like y'all really handled yourselves with such respect. And I think you really, really need to give yourself all the, like all the kudos for that because this could have went another way. You, we, I don't know if you've watched previous seasons, but thank God it wasn't like a clay and AD thing. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just was so respectful and it still made for good TV. Mm, it still made for good TV. Like it, we don't have to have the black man come in and be the fuck boy and the black woman have the misery story. Like, it will still be good TV if you just show black folks going through what they're going through, everyday struggles, because we can all relate to this. Yeah. We can all see ourselves in this. So we don't need to have stereotypical stories when it comes to black people. Just show us how we are. And I guarantee you, people will still love it. So uh, this production company to me is better than the one that does the U.S. Like it was really, really good. It was good to watch. And I feel like when it comes to you and Demi again, like I'm sad, but I'm happy because Mm -hmm. both of you guys came out looking very, very good, natural human beings. Like I I just loved it. And so we leave off with, obviously we're going to have the reunion. You know, I don't want to ruin the reunion, but you guys said it's a no for now. 
are you able to tell me whether y'all, you know, reconvened? Wait, listen, you have to wait for, for the reunion for that. I can, I I can only wait. take you. I can only take you up to the wedding, I'm afraid. I can't take you any further than that. All I'm gonna say is, oh, you won't do this to me. I listen, listen. I've so got someone. I've got. I'm a, like. I've I've known about you for about five days. The first time I, I'll be real. Like the, the, the first time I came across your page was when I, I saw that video about me, and I became an instant fan. Like, I, I, so you have a you have a big fan in me and a new friend in me, but unfortunately, I can't. I can't do. I can't so do that. Oh, friend, friend. I know. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, I can only take you up to the wedding, but. You got what two days okay. until, until the reunion? What I'm gonna say is sit down, have the volume on full. It's a, it's a, it's gonna be a spicy one, but um, I'm yeah, nah, just enjoy. That's what I'm gonna say. But yeah, tell me this, tell me this. Ultimately, mm. do you feel that love is truly blind, and do you feel that this experiment was a good experiment for you to experience? A thousand percent on both of them. I think the fact that like you know, this isn't giving away any spoilers, we saw three successful weddings. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to know. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, three others even got to the stage of being at the altar tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. And the fact that I'm I'm sitting here talking to, to you, being able to connect with you and, and, and have this conversation with a smile on my face shows that I don't have any regrets. Mm -hmm. um, I've got nothing but love and respect for Demi. I've got, I wouldn't I don't have any bad words to say about her. I'm glad I met her. I hope that she is someone that features in my life for the rest of my life, whether it be we chat every now and then or we, I don't know, like, but I'm never going to, you know. So, yeah, I've got no regrets. I've made some amazing friends in this. I learned a lot about myself. It's been cool being able to share my story. So, yeah, like, I'm so glad I did this. I was it's, I was so, I'm in an iron about doing it from from early. Like, I was, even on day one, I was like, I don't think I can do this. I'm going to leave. I'm so glad I stuck it out. Yeah. Um, like I say, I've, I've received some negative uh, feedback, some positive. I can take it. I'm thick skinned. I'll take the rough with a smooth. I've said it before, I'm not perfect, but overall, I think the, the, proud, the thing I'm proudest of in a way is that good or bad, I was always myself. Like I've got a lot of people who have known me for years and years and years, and mm -hmm. they've all hit me and be like, bro, I just I just saw your lovers blind. Like that's the same Oli I remember from when we was kids. That's the same Oli I went to basketball with, that same Oli I used to train with, that same Oli I went to school. Do you know what I mean? Like that to me yeah. is, is more, like that to me is, is, I'm glad I carried myself as me rather than playing a role, playing a yeah. character. So, yeah, like, You're, you we can see that you were definitely being yourself. And don't <laughs> beat yourself up, yeah, don't beat yourself up too much. Like right now, because the show is airing and it's new, you know, people will come at you sideways. But as 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 time progresses, you're going to see the tide, the tide change and mm -hmm. people you're going to get more positive feedback. Trust me. But also, like, do what you need to do for your mental health, too. If you got to unplug, if you got to mute certain words, if you got to block people, baby, do what you got to do because you're a real person at the end of the day. I think a lot of people forget like, yes, we're watching a show, but this is your real life. Like you're a real person. You did this experiment. You gave it your all. And you know what? You weren't a jackass. You weren't a jerk. You weren't a fuck boy. Like you <laughs> carried yourself with a lot of dignity and respect like that. I really am thankful for. And, and again, like as a black woman watching a black man on this on this platform, the way you carried yourself was superb, superb, superb. Yeah, you made mistakes here and there. You're human. Mm. You're human. So don't beat yourself up. Like, don't Thank beat you. yourself up. Everything, you know, everything in life worked out the way it was supposed to work out. And we'll see where your story goes from here. Like, I, I see nothing but goodness coming your way. And oh, thank you so much. That yeah, genuinely means a lot. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm so thankful that you decided to sit down with me, tell me your experience. I'm definitely gonna watch the reunion. Definitely gonna do more commentary on that. But in the meantime, I, I'm so happy that I got to sit down with you. So let us know, like, how we can follow you, how we can support you. Do you have anything down the pipeline that you want us to support? You know. Yeah, so obviously you can follow me on Instagram. It's Ollie One Sutherland. Um, that's O W L I E. And yeah, I think something I'm trying to work on again, I don't know if you noticed, I previously had a, a, a combat sports podcast that I'm looking to either fire up again or, or lean into that kind of like sports presenting again in the future. So you may see something in that space. Mm -hmm. um, you can, I'll probably put the links up at some point on my Instagram so you can go back and watch some of my previous interviews. I've interviewed some really, really interesting guys. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I might want to lean into, but I'm just taking each day as it comes and, you know, reflecting on this crazy experience. 
And like you said, like I'm so so glad I got to sit down and have a conversation with you because when I saw that video, I literally went straight to my Instagram to re to reach out and I was like, this girl's got a million followers. She's never gonna see my DM, and then you DM me, so I was like, oh my god, I'm so thankful. See how that like, works? <laughs> I know it's crazy. It's crazy. But I literally, I didn't even bother DMing you because I thought, yeah, she's never gonna see it. And then when I saw the message from you, I did you. I was with my mom and I was like, oh my god. And I told her the story. She's like, oh, that's amazing. So I was like, yeah, like yeah. I'm so glad we were able to connect. And I'm, I'm yeah. I really thank you for taking the time to not jump the gun and judge me and actually understand what I was going through rather than rather than just sort of taking the kind of knee-jerk reaction. Like, oh, I hate this. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, but I also want to end the conversation by saying, well, not end the conversation, but I, was, I also want to make a point of saying, like, despite what went on in the show, mm -hmm. I have enough respect for everyone involved in the show. Like, I don't want... I have no bad blood with anyone. Ever, like, I want to be cool with everyone. Yeah. And, yeah, like I say, I made my mistakes. I held my hands up for the ones I've, I've made. And, um, yeah, like... Yeah, I, I put a post up, I think it was yesterday, saying, you know, we're one big family and, you know, we're one That's big dysfunctional family. There's going to be a couple beefs here and there and, and some people aren't going to get along with anyone as, as as well as others. But like yeah. I say, we're still one big family. We went through this together and I think that's important to remember. Good, good, good. Has anybody from like previous seasons reached out to you and said, hey, like, I'm here. They haven't, they haven't actually. Some of the, they have okay. some of the others, I know that much. Yeah, no, they haven't. You guys are in the UK too, because it's, it's so like US based, but... Maybe because you're in the UK, maybe some of them maybe. haven't watched it yet. But I, I, I can see some people reaching out to you in the future, like, yo, like if you need anything. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope that happens for you. And, and like you said, you know, I follow, I support, I will repost whatever you have in your in my stories, like whatever right. you're doing. I definitely am really, really thankful for you sitting down and talking to me. And that's it. I guess I gotta. I gotta watch the reunion to get the tea. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could give it away. I wish I could give it away, but I'm not trying to get myself in trouble. So I, I, all the people I would love to, to tell it to, I'd love to tell it to you, but I'm not gonna get myself in trouble. But um, <laughs> now nah, listen, you're so good at what you do, by the way. These questions have been amazing. This conversation's been amazing. And like, Thank you. even just from watching your video, you're so good at what you do. So do not stop doing what you're doing. Just keep going, because I, I, I love Thank watching. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, y'all, that's it, y'all. So make sure y'all follow Oli. Make sure that you guys tune in for the reunion. And, you know, thank you so much, Oli, again, for sitting down with me and having this chat. And congratulations on all the success of the show and everything that's coming towards your way. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. If you're gonna name drop, let's get it clear. Just you.